All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call the March 22nd, 2021 meeting of the New York State Hearing Aid Dispensing Advisory Board to order. Um, we'll begin with a roll call. I'll, um, I'll call out the board member's name if you can let me know if you're present. Jerry Bergman. Here. Here. Florence Butler. Here. Peter Fisher. Peter Fisher's here. Eric Freeman. Eric Freeman is here. Anna Kim. Ann Orsini. Present. Vanita Shapiro. Present. Okay, I count five board members. Dave Mosberg, can you confirm we do not have a quorum? That's correct. I counted the same number as you did. Okay. Um, so since we don't have a quorum, we'll um, move right into the department subcommittee report. Um, the enforcement report, uh, Ernita is going to present that. Um, but she also included um, a written report in the materials that were sent to you for the meeting, in the meeting invitation. Um, Ernita? Ernita, we can't hear you. Okay, you can hear me now? Yes. All right. Um, okay, so um, I'm sorry I kind of missed the beginning. Are y'all up to my, you ready for me to give the report? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, Ernest, are you on? <coughs> Hello, Ernest. Okay, okay. Just give me a second to pull out the report. Okay. okay. Um, I'm reading um, from the report, the hearing aid a dispenser board meeting written enforcement report. Um, this report covers the period from 1 1 2020 to the present. Total number of new complaints since, um, yeah, is two. The allegations of those two complaints are. <coughs> Misleading advertisement of staff credentials and um, the second one is customer request a full refund after purchasing hearing aids that were uh, not properly fitted. Total number of closed complaints is two. The allegations include customers purchase hearing aid from a dispenser who later closed business. That matter was resolved. Customer requested a full refund after purchasing purchase hearing aids that were pro not properly fitted. That matter was withdrawn. Total number of cases open um, is seven cases. The allegations include false misleading advertising of medical services, dispenser providing services without license. Uh, customer requesting refund after being dissatisfied with service. Uh, dispenser offering online hearing aid. Total number of complaints received over the past 12 months to total number of cases, total number of cake of complaints involving audiologists were none. Total number of complaints involving dispensers were nine. Total number against online hearing aid vendors, one case. The next report, report that I will read is um, the consumers can go to the Department of State's website and obtain information on how to file a complaint. A copy of the complaint, this is this, this uh, report describes the complaint process. Uh, sorry. Customers can go to the Department of State website and obtain information on how to file a complaint. A copy of our complaint form can be obtained from the DOS website. Complaints can be filed 
in several different languages. A list of languages can be found on our website. Complaints are received from different sources, emails, email, um, and um, our email address is complaints at dos.ny.gov, and email is um, our address, address, send the complaint. You can send the complaint to our PO box, 2020 00, I mean 22001, Albany 12201. And you also get complaints um, from referrals of other government agencies. All complaints received are processed and entered into a database system. A file number is generated and is referenced throughout the life of the file. The complainant and the respondent information is captured along with the nature of the complaint. An acknowledgement letter is sent to the complainant acknowledging receipt of the complaint by the department. The file is ready for complaint review processing. Complaint review unit manager reviews the files to examine the particulars of the complaint. Any merit to a complaint is determined. Cases without merit are closed. Files that warrant further review are assigned to a complaint review investigator. During the complaint During the complaint review unit, does someone have a question? Okay, during the complaint review unit, CRU, review, the CRU reviews the complaint, is contacted, during, excuse me, during the complaint review unit, the complainant is contacted and asked to elaborate on the complaint and to provide supporting documentation. The respondent is notified of the complaint and asked to provide a written response and to submit supporting documentation. Both responses from the complainant and the responder are reviewed. Cases that warrant a full investigation are forwarded for enforcement investigation process. A letter is sent to the complainant advising that the complaint, that the complaint um, um, is being forwarded for further investigation. The case is assigned to an enforcement investigator who will con conduct a full investigation, making any necessary contact and communication. At the conclusion of the investigation, a recommendation is made. The file is closed or referred to counsel with recommendation that a hearing be held. The complainant is notified that the case has been referred to counsel for review. In cases where the complaint will be closed with no further action, the complainant and the respondent are notified of the decision. Field inspections are conducted by enforcement investigators to enforce regulations and ensure statutory compliance. Um, that's the report of the complaint review process and of uh, enforcement activity. Thank you, Arnita. Does anyone have any questions for Arnita about the enforcement report? Okay, next on the agenda is the processing report. Emily Luby. Hello. Uh, included in the materials you were provided, you will find licensing statistics for March 2020 and March 2021. The reports show the number of hearing aid businesses broken down by county, a business list broken down by class code or license type, and a report of hearing aid dispensers broken down by type and by county. The 2021 numbers include only licensees and do not include those licensees whose licenses may have expired and are covered by Executive Order 202.11 which allows individuals licensed by the Department of State to extend the expiration of their license during the state of emergency. That concludes the processing report. Thank you, Emily. Does anyone have questions for Emily? Okay. Um, next on the agenda, the education report, Allison Lacey. Allison. Good morning. The Bureau of Educational Standards continues to audit hearing aid dispenser renewals. Those renewals which do not indicate approval <coughs> code numbers or do not appear to include T coil infection control and the New York State federal New York State and federal law in addition to the balance of required hours are not processed 
and sent to the Bureau for an educational compliance audit. A renewal license will only be granted when satisfactory proof of education is provided. So far in 2021, 10 licensees have been audited and five have complied. Of the five that are pending, most are within the time frame to respond. Course availability appears to be adequate and has not been an issue raised by licensees. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you, Allison. Um, next item on the agenda is the examination report, Shannon McGuire. Good afternoon. From January to February of 2021, we administered the hearing aid written exam to 13 applicants with a pass rate of 61%. In that si same time frame, the hearing aid uh, dispenser practical exam was administered to 10 applicants with a pass rate of 70%. We have recently made the hearing aid practical exam information available on our website. Prior to making it available on the website, it was sent out to candidates with their scheduled exam date. This provides potential candidates with the opportunity to review examination requirements before they are scheduled for their examination. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Does anyone have any questions for Shannon? Okay, great. Um, the next item is under new business, uh, executive order update, David Mosper. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as everyone should be aware, uh, there are several executive orders relating to the hearing aid business currently in effect. Uh, the governor signed a new executive order yesterday continuing the licensing extender. Um, that executive order is in effect through April 20th, 2021, and it allows any licensee um, whose license had expired during the start of uh, the pandemic to continue uh, to operate under the prior existing license. And that is the update for the EOs. Thank you, Dave. Any questions? Uh, yes, David, just confirming on this. So if someone is continuing under their previous license, they still have to get their continuing courses uh, to follow up on that event to still show all that information. Right, so eventually when that individual or entity attempted to renew the license, they would have to show compliance for the CE when they renew it. Any other questions? You said there were nine executive orders? No, I, I said that there were several um, executive orders that- Excuse me, it's not complaints before. So what were some of the other executive orders? Uh, everything from social distancing to, um, you know, allowing video hearings for open meetings, such as the one we're conducting today. Um, but as a relevant to this board, uh, the only one that I believe would be relevant would have been the license continuation, which was extended yesterday to, as I said, April 20. Okay. All right, any other questions for Dave? Thank you, Dave. Um, next item on the agenda is Denise um, to discuss the next meeting date. Hi, um, I just wanted to make an announcement that our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 7th at 1 p.m. Um, you're always welcome to submit agenda items um, for us to consider. And um, that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you, Denise. Jerry, did you have a question? You're on mute. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. I'd, I'd like to raise the issue of vacancies on the board and the difficulty we've had in getting quorums for our meetings. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes. 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 Yes.
Yeah. Are you hearing me? I lost my caption. Okay. Um, I think we currently have one, two, three, four, four, four vacancies. And I wonder if the staff can give us an update on whether candidates are being vetted for any of those four positions, and if so, which ones? Um, I would, I would also like the staff to take a look at the minutes of the previous meetings for the attendance record, and also the attendance record for this meeting. Uh, I think that anyone who's missed more than one or two meetings should be approached and asked if they would like to continue and if they would please make more of an effort to be present. So that's my question. So um, thank you, Jerry. As you may know, I think this has been discussed at prior meetings, but um, so we don't have, staff doesn't have an update on the uh, board appointments. As you may know, the appointments may be not licensing staff, um, but we can definitely um, see if there's information that can be provided. But I do know that we're told to um, forward, we're, you know, to uh, anyone in that has know someone with an interest or anyone that has an interest in serving to the board to send it off to Denise um, and then that gets sent and then it gets vetted. We don't, we aren't reported um, back to on the process or on the status of, um, but something to keep in mind um, that <coughs> someone that, you know, the board appointments are certain categories and so there has to be a vacant item to fill for, you know, like some are public members, some are audiologists, um, who dispense hearing aids. So they will be looked at and the um, person will be contacted, but it's not, um, it's not licensing staff that handles that. But we could still try to get some sort of update um, and see if there's more information we can provide on that. As far as um, board attendance, we do try to encourage board attendance. Um, but as you know, things do pop up and sometimes we don't know ahead of time if um, a member is not gonna make it. But I do understand your concern with the lack of quorum. Um, so we can just okay. you I've raised this before, and I, I, my sense is that the staff isn't really doing much of anything to fill vacancies. And I think, at the very least, uh, it should do some outreach, encourage people to apply, and give us an update on people who are being considered if they're of positions that people have applied for without divulging any great confidential information. I know the process of any candidates can take six to 12 months in some cases. Um, that's unfortunate, but I understand. But I'd like to know whether there are any candidates currently under consideration for these four vacancies. And if not, what could be done? Okay. Thank you, Jerry. I we also encourage um, uh, board members, if you know of individuals that have an interest in serving on the board, um, you know, send that information to Denise as well. <clears throat> so, Jerry, Jody, I've have spoken with several uh, providers to see if they'd be interested in serving on the board. Uh, primarily in Western New York, Southern Western New York, and um, up around, also around Syracuse, Albany area. And I haven't, the response is, uh, you know, not too interested. I know we need to get another ENT as well on the board and have our ENT that is on the board join a meeting. 
but I have a concern along with what Jerry has. I understand that most of the appointments are to be made by the governor and you know, that hasn't been done yet in quite a while. You know, can someone reach out to the governor's office to maybe give that fire lit a little bit? Um, because my concern is, and I've had this conversation with a few people, is what would happen to our board if it gets dissolved because of lack of activity? You know, we're here to protect the consumers and make sure information gets out there properly and all that. But if we're not being asked to advise or told since we're not advising, you know, what's, you know, what would wind up happening. So I think it's important that we do get this moving along because there's a lot of changes that our, our industry and our profession will be changing over the next few years and some of it pretty current. And that information needs to be uh, advised on. Um, all good points, Eric, I agree. Uh, but I wonder, for example, why the staff doesn't advertise the vacancies uh, in hearing loss, hearing aid publications, uh, and at least get some resumes in the pipeline. I understand the process of appointment goes through goes through the legislature or the governor. But that's, that's where it's stuck, Jerry. Step one is finding people who would be interested in serving. And I just think that nothing is happening along those lines at the moment. So um, thank you for your comments. And I, I would just say that until such time as more members are appointed, we can continue our work and and uh, your advisement on, you know, industry topics that are coming up. We can still address those concerns at this point. Unfortunately, the meeting um, summaries can't be approved, but we can still continue to conduct the meetings and um, discuss any issues that need attention. So I thank you. Um, okay, so if there's nothing else, those are all the agenda items. Um, can someone make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make the motion to adjourn the meeting. I'd like us to be able to do more. I'm sure all of us on this uh, board want to do more. So what can we do to do more though? I'll open that for discussion with the board members. Come on, Ann. <laughs> so once again, it's really hard to get things done with, with no quorum. Um, I agree that um, especially now since um, we're able to do this from anywhere. I don't really see any reason why all board members um, shouldn't be present. And I would request that maybe um, prior to the meeting, somebody reaches out to see if the board is going to be present um, or enough board members for a quorum. And if not, we reschedule the meeting. Um, because everybody's busy and take time for these meetings and it's hard to um, move, um, have a productive meeting when there's no forum. Understood. One of the, um, one of the constraints I think is that this board is required to meet four times a year by statute, I believe, Dave. Yeah. Um, so, um, we do. We do expect a quorum because we have enough members for a quorum and they do respond um, and accept the meeting invitations, I think, Denise, for this meeting in particular. We had one last minute person that couldn't attend, um, but we did expect uh, we did expect with everyone present that we would have a quorum and unfortunately we did not. So, so how, ma how many board members would have to be absent for us not to have a quorum? So Dave, I'll let you speak to that. Oh, Dr. Kim joined, it looks like. 
So this statutory board has 13 members. Um, so we require a majority of 13. Um, there are other boards housed within DOS that, for example, um, in the statute provide that it's uh, the majority of those appointed. So if there are any vacancies, they don't count. Uh, however, the general business law does not have similar language here. So we need a simple majority of 13. So you need at least seven. And how many are currently um, on the board? Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> That's too tight. <laughs> Thank you, David. Um, I do agree more board members um, would um, helped ensure that we did have a quorum in place. So anything that could be done would be greatly appreciated. Yes, and that's something we'll look more into. Like I said, we don't have control over it here at the uh, division level. So, um, but we'll see if we can reach out again and, and look to see if there's any, um, any people under consideration. So um, I thank you. We, under, we understand the question. Um, sorry, I just had... One more question. Do we have any idea of how many applicants have been sent and their status? Because I know um, I had submitted one um, a while back um, and never heard anything. So I just would like to know, I mean, are applications going in um, and being submitted and they're just hanging out there. Is there any process that that the, the candidate is notified um, once they've applied? Um, just wondering. You mean like an acknowledgement? I mean, yeah. I so I had somebody who was really interested, and they went through the whole process for applying, but what was never nothing ever happened so nobody was ever notified um so i was just wondering if there's a process and if there's a number of applicants out there that are pending right we'll try to get the information whatever information comes to the next meeting okay that that would be helpful yep i see that dr kim is with us um hello dr kim um if you could help us find an, another ENT in this wonderful state of New York that might be interested. I've spoken to a few ENTs in my region and they're not interested. This is Jerry. Uh, I think we also have one uh, consumer who's applied and he happens to be with us today as a guest, Eric. Jackson? Eric, if you can hear me, have you heard anything about your application? No. So I would second uh, uh, the suggestion that the board at least keep us surprise of how many applications have been submitted and are in process and for which positions. Thank you. Um, any other discussion on that? Okay. Um, can someone make a motion to adjourn then? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everybody. See you in a few months. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.